Despite their small size, the Maltese Islands enjoy a long coastline. In fact, it's almost 300 kilometers long. The coast goes from rocky bays to spectacular sheer cliffs higher than many tower blocks to stunning pocket sandy beaches, all the results of millions of years of erosion and the battle between the land and the sea. In some areas, boulders have tumbled from the land into the sea, creating natural mini harbors and breakwaters, perfect places for many marine creatures to call their home. This whole stretch of coast is the largest marine protected area in the Maltese Islands. It stretches for more than 11 kilometers from Raza Raheb to Rudum Maisa. And as we go underwater, there are plenty of fish and invertebrates to welcome us to the clear blue seas of the Mediterranean. Like these cardinal fish, you'll find them usually near the entrances to caves since they prefer low light intensities. Some species are booming in numbers, like parrotfish, mainly thanks to the gradual increase in the temperature of the sea. The parrotfish undergo an unusual transformation. They start life as brightly coloured females and later on change into darker coloured males. This habitat is called coral genus and it's one of the most colourful of all the underwater habitats in the Mediterranean and it's home to a large number of different species. This isn't your average garden lawn. This dense underwater vegetation is in many ways the sea's equivalent of the equatorial rainforest and it's vital for the ecology of the Mediterranean. The Posidonia Oceanica meadows, as they're known, are teeming with life. Many fish lay their eggs in these meadows and the roots help to protect the coast from wave erosion. Posidonia oceanica is an endemic species of the Mediterranean and it is a seagrass, not an algae, even though in Maltese language it's known as alca. It flowers and even produces olive-shaped fruit. Minute organisms, known as epiphytes, compete for light with the seagrass, since they live on its leaves. Despite their importance, Posidonia oceanica meadows cover only around 2% of the seabed of the entire Mediterranean. Their protection is vital for the life of the sea. This fan worm is hungry and it uses its modified tentacles like a spoon to collect any small plankton particles which drift towards it. Someone else who's busy is this starfish. Starfish are amongst the most charismatic of all the underwater creatures. They're relatives of sea urchins and brittle stars, and they don't always come with five arms.
One of the most primitive of animals is the sponge. Sponges filter food particles out of the water flowing through them and elbow out their competitors in the sea by taking up available space as quickly as they can and then growing over it. This particular sponge is similar to the kitchen sponge, which is sometimes harvested by man. Try to avoid this guy. A mauve stinger jellyfish. And yes, it does sting. Its long tentacles contain batteries of stinging cells which inject a toxin poisonous enough to immobilize small prey. It owes its scientific name, Pelagia noctiluca, to the fact that it glows in the dark. In recent years, this species has formed huge blooms, spreading out for tens of kilometers. These stargazers live in sandy areas, and they ambush any naive creatures passing by. They're also extremely venomous when trampled upon, so watch out. Sometimes it's hard to spot fish in the Mediterranean as they're so well camouflaged. A painted coma leads us to his neighbor, a scorpion fish. Scorpion fish live in rocky bottoms and they're well armed with venomous spines on their backs. They can grow up to half a meter in length and eat other small fish, crustaceans and mollusks. This fish is beautiful. It's a John Dory or Peter's fish and has become a rare sight nowadays. It has a highly compressed body to reduce water resistance. It uses small hair-like fins on its back to stabilize its position and its movements are quite like a hovering helicopter. The John Dory fish has a large black spot on its side, which might be mistaken by predators as the eye of a much larger fish. Although popular legend states that the spot is the thumbprint of St. Peter. Not all fish like to show off like the John Dory. Lurking in the grass here, is a wrasse. They get their name from the Welsh word for old woman or old hag, and this one is grumpy. And speaking of extraordinary fish, look at this spectacular flying gurnard with wing-like pectoral fins. It glides like a plane effortlessly over large distances. And the Gurnard leads us to another fascinating creature, the cuttlefish. Perfectly camouflaged and ready to escape at amazing torpedo-like acceleration. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. That's how this relationship known as mutualism works. This hermit crab has a soft body and carries an empty and hard snail shell on its back. Here, a sea anemone has made a home on the shell, protecting the hermit crab from attack 
and getting scraps of food and a free ride for itself in the process. The search for food is never-ending for this hungry red mullet, frantically digging through the sand and gravel with its barbules, using them like a shovel or a spade, searching for small crustaceans to eat. This is the master of deceit. One of the smartest guys on the block, the octopus. He manages to evade danger in a number of ways, from camouflage to hiding in secret places, to using his speed, strong grip, and most famously, his ink. Octopus can spray their ink further afield by mixing it with water and then squirting it out fast in a jet of water through their funnel. No ecosystem exists in isolation, and energy and nutrients flow from one system to another. This beautiful temporary waterfall brings a new lease of life into the marine world at Rudum Maisa, adding normally scarce nutrients into the sea. This windfall of food is like manna from heaven for this show of damselfish. This part of the Mediterranean really is full of colour, and this large shoal of yellow striped fish are found in many coastal areas throughout the year. Salimas are recognizable by their large yellow eyes with black irises. Very often in this part of the Mediterranean, you come across creatures which almost look out of this world, such as this, the sea hare. It's a relative of the snail and the slug, but it only has a soft internal shell. It's a plant eater and mainly feeds at night, and it protects itself from predators by producing a toxin which makes it taste terrible. And some sea hares spray ink to ward off potential hunters. As we've seen, this stretch of the central Mediterranean on the northwest coast of Malta is truly remarkable. The sea here supports a splendid gathering of wildlife, but this great diversity has come at a high cost. It has made it one of the most balanced ecosystems, only to be easily upset and destroyed by ourselves. Survival of the natural world lies in our hands. We can either destroy or cherish it. The choice is ours. <laughs>